What up, pilots? Sitting in a flogger again. So I made a hypoxia video about a day or two ago. But I didn't really explain what hypoxia was as much. I kind of just wanted to introduce the idea of hypoxia and how cool it would be modeled. And I wanted to go a little bit more in depth and kind of explain what hypoxia is and what it can lead to. So... And then how, how they can model it into the game. So... Let's start out with masks. Because that's important. So even though... Even though if the canopy is busted or off or whatever, we're still wearing a mask. Okay? There's different masks. Uh, we're going to talk about two types. There is airline masks and fighter pilot masks. There's more masks than that, but those are the two that we're going to talk about. So airline pilot masks, uh, they're a diluter style which supplies 100% oxygen, allowing them to breathe. I mean, it's that simple there. Fighter pilot masks are a step up from that though, and they literally supply oxygen under positive pressure to combat lack of partial pressure at high altitude. Uh, they basically breathe for the fighter pilot. So they're a little bit more tricky to learn, and they have to go through a training to learn how to use those masks, the uh, fighter pilots do. So, also, velocity, speed, has nothing to do with hypoxia. All hypoxia is, is a lack of oxygen. That's literally what hypoxia means, is a lack of oxygen, okay? So, if our canopy's busted and our mask is still fine and still, uh, still functional, uh, we're gonna be fine. If we're uh, if we're up at twenty thirty thousand feet doing BVR or dog fighting up there, or you know, getting to altitude and then we get jumped into P fifty one, or you know, doing beyond visual range in a Tomcat or whatever it may be, and we get shot at IRL, uh, not in game because that's that what I'm talking about now is not in the game, and we get shot at, and our uh, canopy gets busted, we can still make it home, right? Pilot, there has been cases where pilots make it home from a canopy getting uh, busted and it comes loose, or you know, whatever from you know older style aircraft. There has been there has been cases of pilots making it home. What I'm talking, what I was talking about in my previous video is if the mask and the canopy comes off. Uh, if the canopy comes off and the mask malfunctions and we're at 30,000 feet and we're going Mach 1 that's bad you know we're obviously we have a lack of oxygen at that altitude our mask is screwed up our canopy got busted off then we're most likely gonna get G-lock okay which means we're most likely going to pass out at that altitude with no oxygen. And we're probably going to die. That's what I was talking about. Especially if we're going over Mach 1 and everything just goes boom. Everything just malfunctions and then our canopy gets busted. Okay. That's what I was talking about with that. Um, so again, velocity has nothing to do with hypoxia. Speed has nothing to do with hypoxia. So... All hypoxia is, again, is a lack of oxygen. All right, and there's, it operates in four different mechanisms. Hypoxic hypoxia. So low partial pressure air can get through the ventricles in your lungs, and it never reaches your bloodstream. Therefore, to your brain, and to your eyes, and to your body. Okay, that's, that's due to high altitude. Uh, number two, hypemic hypoxia. Carbon monoxide in the blood bonds to hemoglobin much easier than it does to the oxygen. Uh, basically stealing uh, stealing away the oxygen. Um, again, the result is the oxygen not reaching the, your brain, your eyes, your body. Um, histotoxic hypoxia. Destruction of oxygen in the bloodstream due to things like alcohol or substances. There's a reason why pilots have to go through substance testing and things like that because they 
have to make sure, you know, the companies have to make sure that they can operate that aircraft safely. Safely. Lastly, stagnation hypoxia, where blood physically stops flowing to your brain because of high G. Okay. So that's what hypoxia is. Is a lack is is just a lack of oxygen. Now, due to hypoxia, these things can happen. Gray out. So the human eye contains two structures of interest, rods and cones. Rods are good at detecting light. Uh, rods are more in the peripheral portion of your retina. Cones are better at seeing, uh, detecting color and are distributed more in the center of your vision. Okay, which is why pilots are actually taught that it's best to look for aircraft through your peripheral vision, not through the center of your vision. Okay, so that's gray out. In addition to gray out, there's tunnel visioning, where oxygen from your peripheral receptors in your central vision to, pre to preserve your central vision because it assumes that what you're looking at is more important than what's in your peripheral so that's tunnel visioning you tunnel vision out and then there's blackout not enough oxygen for your eyes pretty much simply put and you lose your vision but you're still conscious okay that's blackout and then there's G lock which is where your brain doesn't get oxygen and you totally go unconscious okay now with when it comes to G lock you don't need lack of oxygen or hypoxia to go unconscious you can have a high amount of G and still go unconscious however if you add a lack of oxygen to that mix of pulling high G it can induce G lock faster okay that's what I was talking about. And then there's also negative G, which is red out, which is where you basically you got a lot of blood from pulling so much negative G. You got a lot of blood going into your brain and into your eyes, so you start to see red. And if it's too much, and you're pulling too much negative G, you literally pop. Okay. The human body can withstand positive G more than it can withstand negative G. So, it's all bad, obviously, um, and there's there's reasons why pilots have to go through training, especially fighter pilots have to go through training to uh, withstand G. So, essentially, hypoxia is there's a, a key point here. These are types not of hypoxia; they are symptoms of hypoxia. Okay. So they are typically progressive with one leading to the next outage, all right? So essentially low oxygen or hypoxia can lead to these outages, not the other way around, all right? So there you go. Um, now let's talk about modeling it properly. So let's, our canopy's closed, we're spooled up. Let me set my wing sweep here. We're taking off, so we'll set it to zero all the way forward. Put it back to auto. So, modeling it properly. So let's say that we're in a P-51 or a Focke Wolf or, you know, some type of warbird. P-47, uh, K-61, something like that. Uh, if our system malfunctions, our oxygen system malfunctions, it's going to be a little bit easy for us to get outaged with these different outages like gray out or tunnel visioning or blackout and then G lock it's going to be it's going to be easier to get these symptoms if we have a lack of oxygen all right so with modeling it properly if we're flying in a warbird, an old war, World War II uh, warbird, and our or jet, and our oxygen system malfunctions, then we're gonna have to return to base and repair. Okay, so that would be a cool addition, and it would add to the immersive experience to simulator mode. And uh, simulator mode 
has been gaining there's been players getting more into simulator mode because they want more of an immersive experience there's no name tags and they have to rely on their eyeballs to spot enemies like I see an enemy, I gotta, I see, oh, there's an enemy there, what is it? Oh, it's a Focke Wolf. Okay, I'm flying a P-51, that's automa That's obviously a German plane, so that's a hostile aircraft. Okay, unless that's a captured Focke Wolf, because sometimes in War Thunder there is captured aircraft too. So, or captured, if we're in a Focke Wolf and we see a P-51, that's most likely going to be enemy, unless it's a captured P-51. So, uh modeling it properly would be another thing too so if our system malfunctions and then we're in a jet so to speak and we're up at these higher altitudes doing BVR in a Tomcat or doing BVR in a Fulcrum in a MiG-29 or an F-16 or a Mirage 2000 we're gonna have to return to base to repair Regardless of the aircraft, if our system malfunctions, whether we're in a P-51 or a F-14 and our system malfunctions, we're going to have to return to base and repair. If our canopy is busted and our oxygen is uh, still mal uh, functioning properly, then we're going to be fine. But it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable with that speed that we're going and the altitude that we're at. So if our canopy is busted, if they modeled it to where our vision gets a little fuzzy while our canopy is busted because we are going at the speeds or because we are at that altitude above 350 knots or above 15,000 feet so 350 knots is 648 kilometers an hour and above 15,000 feet is 4, 000, a little bit above 4,500 meters okay then we're going to have to re return to base because our vision is getting a little fuzzy but our oxygen mask is fine. But if our oxygen mask is also malfunctioning because uh, we took a shot, we're going to have to return to base and repair that. Okay, So that would be uh, modeling it properly. It, w it would just be a cool addition to add to the game and it would add more an immersive experience of on top of simulator mode where you have to fly in cockpit and there is no enemy tags and you have to rely on your your uh, vision to look for enemies and your radar to look for enemies if you're at top tier and rely on your IFF right then that would be a cool addition okay so that's what I was talking about so hopefully hopefully that was explained better and it wasn't as confusing and I do apologize if you did see the last video and now you're watching this one Hopefully that uh, was a little bit more explained better. Okay, so with Sim gaining more players, adding a little bit more of an immersive experience, and you know fixing the economy and things like that, making it a little bit more satisfying with how much Silver Lions we're making and how much more immersive it is, would be a good addition to War Thunder for simulator mode. So. Hopefully that was explained better, and I'll see you guys in the next video.